There are a number of genes that have been implicated in aging from the study of model systems. There are essentially three genes that are being examined in the Georgia Centenarian study. Uh, the first gene, last one, is involved in cholesterol trafficking. And it's a longevity gene that is found in yeast. And it has shown up as a gene that is important in a variety of longevity studies. And so uh, we picked it in this study much as a sort of positive control. So let's see, this is on... The specific team. aim is to simply ask whether or not LAS1 has an impact on human longevity. That's one of the major goals. A second goal is we want to exploit the fact that this gene also can be found in a much simpler or organism, baker's yeast, that you can buy in the supermarket. So we can move very quickly and in a simpler context, look at the effect of, for example, the LAG1 gene in a yeast setting, uh, but we can also jump back to other more complicated model systems and see if the general principles that emerge in the sim simpler systems are also preserved in mammalian systems like us. Another gene that is being looked at is RAS1. Both of these genes, RAS1 and LAG1, are thought to be involved in a transient stress response uh, by yeast and possibly human beings. And so again, what we can do if there is a significant association with longevity in humans, we can again take uh, the, the copies of the human gene and put it into uh, uh, yeast and look at experimentally what this gene is doing. The third one is APOE. Uh, it is involved in levels of cholesterol in human beings. Also, some of the alleles have been connected uh, with Alzheimer's. So there is that connection as well, and that sort of allows us to bring in another piece of the biomedical puzzle, namely uh, those individuals that are characterized not only for their genes that they carry, but they're characterized for their neuropathology as well. The uh, apolipoprotein E4 allele seems to confer the greatest risk for uh, developing Alzheimer's disease and has been a target of uh, n a number of uh, research studies probably for the last uh, 15 or 20 years. Um, and uh, we've had the opportunity to look at the distribution of the different patterns or different combinations of these flavors of APOE in our centenarian sample. And uh, we've found that uh, actually uh, a, a fair number of our centenarians actually do have at least one copy of the APOE4 allele. Uh, I think it's on the order of about uh, uh, 20% uh, or thereabouts. Um, only about 2% have two copies of the E4 allele, which would be, have the greatest uh, risk for developing Alzheimer's disease. We find that uh, if uh, a participant has at least one copy of the E4 allele, uh, their cognitive abilities almost across the board are significantly lower than the participants who don't have the E4 allele. What new findings can we add to this in combinations with our other tests in neuropsychology? Well, I think what's interesting in our sample is that uh, if APOE is predictive of developing Alzheimer's disease and cardiovascular disease, uh, we would expect very few people in the centenarian group to have the E4 allele. And that's not the case. Um, there's uh, many more than, than you might predict. So what that suggests is that, that there may be protective factors within these centenarians that protect actually protect against um, or mitigate against the development of a disease pathology like Alzheimer's disease because you have a subset of individuals who actually have this risk factor and yet have, have gotten beyond that, have, have, have still lived to this incredible age. Here's a population that may have something different about them. Another uh, thing that is interesting to look at is the APOE2 flavor. Uh, the E2 allele has actually been associated with longevity. There seems to be a greater proportion of people with the E2 allele who live into old age, so there might be some 
longevity um, that's uh, conferred by having that particular flavor of APOE. So by, by having uh, information about these genetic markers, EPOE for example, uh, we'll be able to link them directly back to behavioral characteristics too and look at some gene environment interactions that may also be apparent uh, in this group of survivors uh, that we could never look at before because all the information we had on genetics uh, basically relied on, um, uh, on self-reports of family longevity uh, which are difficult to, uh, uh, to detect. All perhaps with the goal to uh, to find out what it is that uh, allows some centenarians to function extremely well and others uh, less so.